Now about to announce our keynote speaker. If you looked at the information, you've seen that we had Dr. Joel Kahn, he's the one who wrote Vegan Sex, that is, that is coming, and thank you so much. I actually teared up, that was just so sweet, Jessica. Thank you for your information, that was really nice. Um, if you were here last year, you might have noticed, when I was thanking everybody, I got a little choked up, and I normally don't do that. And the reason why was my husband had, was about to turn 56, and his father had died at the age of 57. And all I could think of was, oh my goodness, we are going crazy out there, working on IEPs, getting our kids better, doing all this stuff, and the whole focus has been on the kids instead of us and our health. So that kind of started this whole odyssey, and we had some conversations, and one of the conversations was, you need to go see a cardiologist, we need, we need to do this. And I started asking around our network, and. My good friend Allison said, oh, Dr. Joel Kahn is the best, and he's right here. And so we went to see Dr. Kahn, and instead of doing just this many tests, he does all these tests, and he gets you a lot of great information, and he tells you how strong and vital your veins are, so you can get this information. So I just am going to wrap my husband out a little bit, because it was kind of cool. Um, Dana really liked me, still likes me, and we're going to hear about whole plant-based food, and there are several documentaries. Yes, he's, he's giving the thumbs up. There were several documentaries that Dr. Khan gave him some information on, and Dana really likes to look at information, and at first he was like, there's no way, I'm not gonna do this. I like burgers, I like steak, I like chicken, fish, that's just not happening. The more he researched, the more he found out about it, he decided, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna try this. And I'm very proud of him. He's only lost, like, I think five pounds, but he's had psoriasis and it's been disappearing and he's lost some inches. And I remember Dr. Khan told you that your veins at the age of 56 were the age of a 64-year-old. Well, the really cool thing is his blood pressure has gone down. It's recently 115 over 76. And the 76 is a really big number. It used to be 84. So we know it's going down. And that's been really, really super exciting. So with that, I would like to introduce Dr. Joel Khan. He's back there getting something to drink. He'll be up here in a second. Dr. Khan is a cardiologist. He's a best-selling author, author of two of those books. He's given us a few books. Owner of two plant-based restaurants in Ferndale, and he just told us he has a truck that's going live today in Austin, Texas, one of those trucks that they go around, which is super cool. Um, author of five books, over 100 science articles, and hundreds of health papers. He is absolutely the real deal. He's been in documentaries. He knows a lot about your health. MD cardiologist, let me introduce Dr. Joel Kahn. Would you like this one? Oh, we got to do the picture. Do so you okay, like this yeah, one or the last one? Walk around. Okay. okay. I'm going to walk around here. Okay, Thank there you go. We'll see. Whenever they come up, if they come up, it's fine. I am uh, truly. Truly, truly grateful for the invite to come today and uh, the wonderful crowd. Um, Julie is uh, quite a force in a very difficult life that we face at times. I can relate on a few levels. I don't speak about this much. I actually had an infant child that died early in life and we were warrior mom and dad ourselves for a while. Uh, raised three children, which is a mini warrior, not, not to at all comment on what uh, your journeys are, but the most intensive journeys have been there um, and shared many other experiences just as a physician and the opportunity for people to open up and trust in you a bit. Uh, number two, I'm very, very good friends with a nutritionist fitness expert in um, L.A., San Diego, uh, J.J. Virgin, some of you may know the name J.J. Virgin, six foot two, stunning, blonde Californian, uh, but she had a book come out called Miracle Mindset about her 16-year-old son with bipolar disorder who, in a fit of fury, ran out of the house and got run over by a car and was as close to dead as you could be. Same injury that Princess Diana had, but... Um, his younger brother and the family pulled together and three months later, by some miracle, the child left the hospital, um, brain pretty intact. I've met him, Grant. But the book has just come out under a new title called Warrior Mom. And uh, I've already sent Julie that by email. She hasn't seen it yet. I knew the book was coming out under a new title. I didn't realize it was exactly the same kind of uh, title that you were using in this wonderful organization. So 
I can't promise, but I can certainly reach out and see if maybe next year we can get one of uh, one of the most prominent speakers and organizers uh, and all. But anyways, we might look at that too because it's it's not just the story of JJ Virgin and her family, but it's the mindset, as was the original title, about how she got through you know pure hell and still has a lot of that going on. And maybe there was a third thing, but I don't remember it. Uh, that's okay. Uh, you don't have to be perfect. I do have a PowerPoint. It's disappeared, and that doesn't stress me out. <laughs> if I were going to speak to you about stress, and I was freaking out, um, you would, you would it would be bad. I'm sure it's happened. I'm sure it's happened. You know, non uh, uh, how to quit smoking talk, and you see the speaker outside. Would be bad. <laughs> You will see a little bit later this afternoon, maybe just shortly later, my chef Max from Green Space Cafe. I'm not speaking about that, but I got interested as a cardiologist training in Ann Arbor, training around the country, Dallas. I know we have Austin here. I was in Dallas, Kansas City. I got interested in nutrition early, and you probably have heard most docs don't learn anything about nutrition. And it's true, I learned it outside of medical school, outside of training, but um, did all the cath lab heart attack cardiology. Um, very wonderful, but some would say stressful kind of career, and kept gravitating towards more and more kind of healthy, holistic yogas, tai chi's, meditation, while I was doing the crazies, but about three years ago threw the baby out of the bath water and do only kind of wellness cardiology now, and it's remarkable. It in no way lessens the hard work that my peers do in the traditional mode, because sometimes you absolutely need surgery or you absolutely need emergency room care, but for most of us, the best gift we can give to ourselves is a good wraparound program of self-care. It's not all about denial. We've got foot baths here, I see. I'm all for that. I think there's a little portable infrared sauna. I'm all for that. I was actually going to talk about that. There's massage I can see going up uh, in some of the other rooms and yoga. Uh, it can be great food. And uh, I won't talk about alcohol, leave that for questions, but once in blue moon. Whoa, miracle. And Warren and Mom brought it back. So somewhere along that journey, the family decided, my oldest son Daniel, who's 34 now, and my wife Karen, that we were going to open a little 400 square foot juice bar. Well, at the end of the year, there was a 4,000 square foot uh, restaurant in Ferndale that's been open two and a half years, green space, and done extremely well and been very gratifying, although, as anybody would tell you, extremely insane and hard work. And now there's a second one at 14 in Woodward. But anyway, so we'll march on into recognizing um, you know, a common statement that visits to the doctor, aches and pains, are very often at the root cause stress, uh, ways we adapt to stress using uh, food, using alcohol, poor sleep, um, and talk a little bit about some tools, maybe one out of 10 that I'm gonna to talk to you about is a tool you might gravitate to. Uh, maybe three, maybe eight, we'll see. But anyways, we're gonna talk about how to do that and end up at the end of the day, maybe just, you know, if you take care of yourself just a little bit better by one of these tools, you might be able to take care of others just a little bit better too. So if you can proceed forward. So it says at the top, holistic health is not just a dress size. We spend a lot of time agonizing about weight. It's not unimportant. Uh, it relates to certain conditions we give names to, like diabetes and high blood pressure and back pain and uh, even some risk increased of cancer. But really health is a complex issue of sleep, of uh, uh, social ties up there, of which this group is a great example. And it's even gotten more complex with clean air, clean water, hormonal balance, uh, clean food, as we'll talk about. And certainly there's a few common, common threads of the cleanest food source you can find as much of the time as you can find. Certainly not smoking as much of the time. Uh, it should be an absolute rule, but we understand there are addictions to cigarettes, food, as well as alcohol and drugs. Uh, moving as much as you can, and anybody that needs to stand up and move around during this talk is fine by me. That's what I'd be doing if I were listening to this talk. I'd be in the back of the room pacing. And, and finding healthy ways to manage stress. You don't avoid stress, nobody's got a stress-free life that's above ground, there are people below ground that have stress-free lives or stress-free existences, but um, you gotta find something or several things that work for you. And 
common threads are breath work and movement and joy and music. Sometimes herbs. Uh, sometimes herbs that are on the ballot uh, for the state of Michigan in November, or their derivatives like CBD oil. And, uh, those are, you know, they can be part of a healthy stress management program. I'd rather you vape than smoke. Better for your lungs. Oh, no, Mr. Bill. Let's go. You think it's going to come back? We're we having a uh, legitimately serious problem. It's no problem. So let's talk about number one. I don't. I could do this one blindfold. I may have to. Number one. Tip number one, uh, which is clean as clean as clean as food possible. Food, you've, you know, I don't assume that you've been to a food talk before. Um, there's a statement, there we go, that's just what it's going to say. Hippocrates, and this is a more modern version, uh, the statement, food is medicine. If you walk in my new restaurant at 14 Woodward, you'll see on the wall, food is medicine. Food is information, is what this slide said. That literally your body can analyze what you just put in it for lunch and can you know, detect sugar, can detect chemicals, can detect amino acids from protein sources and what kind of carbohydrates and what fats. And your body reacts to it very quickly, within minutes. And it reacts differently to the fresher, the more farm, the more farmer's market table than what's happened to this country in the last 60 or 70 years. I'm not here to dig in and beat up on anybody, but I had reason to give a little tour of the cafeteria and lobby of one of the major hospitals in town. Of course, I'm on staff in hospitals, but I try and stay out of them. They're not places where health usually happens. And certainly the food represented by the carrot cakes and the cookies and the fried foods and the soda pops. You, understandably, the public's very confused what's healthy food. So if you can go to the next slide without it all crashing. I love to show this example just to, I understand, busy, busy families, busy moms, rushing around schedules, there's that drive through there's that window, that's the solution, and I can feed somebody, and, or a whole family, and it's easy. I just want to show you the consequences, not to uh, moralize, but to be scientific. This is a famous study done by a University of Michigan professor when he had moved down to the University of Maryland, Robert Vogel, MD, cardiologist, my mentor who took healthy people, one morning gave them a bowl of oatmeal, looked at, with some apparatus on their arm, how the arteries were working, and arteries are important. You got 50,000 miles of them from your head to your toe. They determine pretty much everything that gets to every cell in your body. And the day he fed these healthy volunteers oatmeal, nothing happened to their arteries because oatmeal is pretty neutral. And, and you, well, I'll show you how quick. Then he literally went to the McDonald's down the street and got for each volunteer a sausage egg McMuffin. They did repeat the study of sausage egg McMuffin with hash browns, it was just a little worse. And they looked what happened to artery health within a period of time. In the red line you can see within an hour there was starting to be a drop in the health of arteries, measured in a very scientific, sophisticated way. And then it went down, 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 down. So, if you're going on a date, sausage egg McMuffin would be a very bad choice because your arteries are not going to be very healthy. They're like stunned by chemical warfare, which is literally what it is. It's actually been sorted out. The sugar's a component. It's really mainly the animal saturated fat that does it more than anything else. And the, probably the sausage patty and the cheese are the most guilty parties here. Probably the antibiotics and probably the hormones, and probably the chemicals and probably the processed white flour. Maybe Monsanto and Roundup and glyphosate and on and on. But uh, food can have an impact. You know, sometimes you know that you eat a meal and you just feel lousy. I mean, I hope once in a while you ate a meal and maybe felt a little peppy, but make a big green smoothie in the morning, it could happen that way. But you certainly can get that kind of just, I'm tired after a meal, your lack of initiative, or your initiative went down. And it's this kind of reaction that happens. So, you know, it isn't just, okay, it's one meal for the family and it's got Colonel Sanders' picture. And I mean, it's, I'll worry about heart disease 20 years from now or diabetes. It's really a few minutes. Every bite is information. Every bite is a bit of a vote towards you feeling better, being better to yourself, being better to your family, or the opposite. Do you have to be perfect? Is this a guilt trip? No, you can be perfect. There are people that manage the exquisitely well two to three meals a day. We'll talk why I just said two at the very end. But you can do it a lot of the time. 80-20, a lot of people say 90-10 as common rules. If you absolutely need a, a Tim Horton donut on the way to work, do it on you know, Meatless Monday and not any other day of the week, but don't do it too often. It's, it's actually, I just was listening to a podcast by a brilliant, brilliant dietitian in LA 
who quoted St. Augustine that uh, abstinence is easier than perfect moderation. That if you're really struggling with something, whether it's a food addiction, a sugar addiction, an alcohol addiction, coffee addiction, game addiction, that abstinence is easier than, I'll do, you know, I'll cut back and I'll, I'll, I'll do it less. Moderation and everything. It doesn't work for addictions. And some of the fast food is one of the most common addictions because it just makes your brain feel like you're at the MGM Grand Casino. I mean, it's a, it's a great thing to be getting sugar and oils. And uh, cheese has a hormone in it called casomorphone that makes your brain feel like you're on cocaine. So do CBD, it's from a plant. Don't eat food that's made in a plant. We'll see you in a minute. Next slide, it will work. Great, so if our, I'm not, a, I'm not a conspiracy person, but if our government, Food and Drug Administration was doing its job, and that would include some of the hospitals that have very few, there's only about five McDonald's left in hospitals, but you don't have to drive very far to see a Wendy's and one in uh, John R. in Detroit, the main university hospital there. It's terrible. Next slide, please. All right, so there is, again, you have to be perfect. I have not eaten animal products for 41 years. I, at age 17, University of Michigan, first day, undergrad, the cafeteria did something very good for me. It grossed me out, and I ate from the salad bar, and I stuck with that now for 41 years. I didn't know, you know, I knew I was becoming a cardiologist, but I didn't know that this was going to be a big portion of my career. But you don't have to do it that way. Well, you can, and it's a great thing to do, and you're all aware of Venus Williams and um, other uh, Beyonce and high-profile people that have announced they've given up all animal products. You can just make your health better by always having plants with whatever else you're eating. Um, even this great study down here, and I'll just tell you about it, was very similar. They took healthy volunteers, they went down to the hospital cafeteria and bought a hamburger from the hospital. The same thing the guests, the nurses, the doctors, and the patients eat. And they did this apparatus on their arm, and within an hour, their arteries were not working well. Very, very, you know, concerning concept there about feeding people in a medical setting food that actually makes them worse. But then they gave them the exact same hamburger on another day with a big bowl of salad. And what it did completely, instead of their arteries working far less, it brought it back to neutral. If you had just the salad, it would have been better. But any chance you get, if you are going to eat eggs and bacon, please have spinach and tomato. If you're going to have a turkey uh, cheese sandwich, please somehow get some carrots, some celeries, uh, bring some broccoli from home, you know, eat an apple, eat an orange. The brighter, the more fresher, the better. And every dinner should have fruits and vegetables with it. Uh, the data is, if you look in that upper, uh, your upper right, and it's a little hard to see, but you can actually drop your risk of diabetes, cancer, heart disease, and actually death during a period of time. As far as we know, all of us at one point are going to reach death, but death during a 20 year follow up study, it actually says there's seven or more servings of fruits and vegetables a day. The only practical way to do that is get a blender or get one of the Nutribullets or something like that and start your morning with, you know, giant handful of spinach or kale, blueberries, strawberries. You can buy frozen big bags at Costco and other places so the price isn't high. Organic's great. You don't have to buy organic. I'm going to tell you about that in a second. Uh, but a gigantic, gigantic um, smoothie in the morning with flaxseed and walnuts almond milk can be so beneficial to your health. And in fact, when I speak to somebody like Julie's husband, I usually mention two things, gigantic smoothie in the morning and give up dairy. Those two things, because everything you're eating dairy has a substitute at Kroger's, Myers, Target, Whole Food, Plum, anyway, uh, easily. Next slide, protect yourself. So some wisdom, the whiter the bread, the sooner your dad goes along with sugar, the longer the bread. Don't buy your gas and your food at the same building, except bananas. That's usually a very good rule. If it's from a plant, eat it. If it's made in a plant, skip it. And then probably the most frequently quoted summary of some guidance to people is eat food as opposed to factory imitation stuff. Not too much, mostly plants. Uh, and that's not too restrictive, but if we even got close to that, an author might go pull it. Next slide, if you would. So let's go from food to near food, which is, oh, I can't do all that. Okay, so just buy spices. Okay, it sounds like a funny comment from a cardiologist about wellness. But what are spices other than dry plants? All of you got spices in your kitchen that are 10 years old, they're not spices anymore, they're just the dust of former spices. <laughs> you know, what, unless maybe if you haven't opened them, you know, get some fresh spices. Maybe you want to get organic bottles or just pennies more. But it turns out some of these spices are 
superchargers for any salad, any oatmeal, any soup, any piece of chicken, any uh, rice bowl. Next slide. If you look specifically, I won't go through the science. There are spices like ginger, like oregano, like turmeric that are as powerful as Motrin, as powerful as Naproxen, as powerful as having a steroid burst for an attack of gout. And, and that's specifically ginger, uh, garlic, uh, oregano, rosemary, um, are just really, really powerful. And everybody's favorite lately, which is turmeric, which you find in curry powder, um, and turmeric coming from the root, particularly if you mix it with black pepper. If you got practical, you got headaches, you got sore knees, you got bad periods, whatever it is, just start throwing in lots of uh, spices. My favorites are, you can find them in the stores, these apple spice, pumpkin spices. They have the clove, the ginger, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, all spice, all in one, on oatmeal, on cereal, in the smoothie. And then, you know, kind of herbal uh, turmeric and uh, Italian mixes. Um, it seems silly, but it's really, really simple. Next slide. Okay, number three, just to teach you, this is a little heavy science, but it's so cool. A little bit about food prep, because you probably once in a while spend some time in the kitchen. There is a process called AGE. You see the word there? Of course, it sounds like aging, and we all are concerned about our skin, our hair, our overall health and wellness, our memory, but there's a scientific uh, concept called advanced glycation end product that healthy, healthy things in our body, like nerves, like blood vessels, like red blood cells, that have protein in them, can just like a donut, get sugar-coated, and they become different than they're supposed to be. And the more your blood sugar's up, the more this happens. If anybody in the room is a type 1 or type 2 diabetic, you get a blood test called hemoglobin A1C, which is a percentage of how much of your red cells are sugar-coated, 5.2% means great, and 8.2% means diabetic. Um, you don't want your red blood cells or your nerves or your sexual organs or your eye vessels to be all sugar-coated, they won't work. So, high blood sugar from being overweight, eating processed food, eating high fat, particularly animal foods. But the other one is what's shown there, and this is what's so rarely known, even the science is very strong, is that barbecuing and grilling, and I didn't say never, didn't say never. But barbecuing and grilling accelerates this process like crazy. If you show the next slide, it's science, but it's so cool if it goes forward. If you take a chicken and you grill it, grill it, grill it, this measures how much of that product called EG is formed. And somewhere here is broiled chicken. Boiled chicken, like boiled, not broiled. It's actually like 16 times or 16,000 percent higher when you barbecue meats particularly versus anything else you might want to do to them. Uh, boiling or uh, and sautéing, but it's something about that barbecue, you know, that black crispy stuff. It's very hard. That says apple. That says yam. Um, life cereal. Yay, we got some left. It's very hard to take vegetables and fruits and make them have much of this stuff. But it's very easy to take cheese, butter, and uh, animal meats and do this on a grill. Didn't say never, but when you got a choice and you want to poach some salmon or steam uh, some food, or maybe just, the other part is um, hydration, that the more hydrated a piece of meat is, the less this happens. So it's actually, if you want the best news ever, if you will marinate, and this is a vegan teaching this, if you will marinate chicken or beef or anything else you're gonna put on the barbie in black, black beer. There, actually, somebody did a scientific study, let's grill a piece of chicken and measure this. And let's take a bag full of black beer, let's put the chicken in, let it marinate for a while. Partly any hydration reduces this, but black bear brought it down ridiculously. Black um, beer? Brown beer, brown beer, black bear, dark bear. Dark, let's call it dark bear. Dark bear. Guy owns a bar, can't speak English. Okay. Guinness, Guinness. And I like sour beers, they're not dark. Uh, yeah, black beer, brown beer. Uh, um, I will admit, it's a good mile, and there was a jalapeno martini tasting at my restaurant at 11 a.m., so <laughs> I don't think that's why I said this. All right, so that's kind of interesting stuff. Um, if you really want to read about this AGE stuff, there's books, there's websites. It's just not well known, although the science is profound. Next talk. Next slide. Okay, we talked a little bit. I think you do have. Sauna has come on. I teach my heart patients about accessing sauna. Detroit, we're lucky, but let me tell you the science first. We do accumulate toxins 
we probably always have through time. There always was something burning their people's cabins or huts. Uh, there always have been factories for the past 150, 200 years. But you know, we live denser, there's more cars and buses, and air pollution gets in our body, and water pollution, and we're putting lotion. With, our body is a chemical mass. Uh, recent study, maybe a month ago in Indiana, 100 pregnant women, this is so scary, gave a urine sample, 93% have large amounts of Roundup, the stuff you buy at Home Depot to protect your, you know, your kill your weeds, protect your shrubs. And that is, you know, so we gotta figure out some strategies, one to try to avoid plastics and chemicals and upgrade what we buy and put on our skin, I'll mention that. But you gotta get them out too. It turns out sauna is a real good way to get garbage out of your body. Infrared is a real potent way, a certain kind of sauna that has panels in the wall and you sweat and you sweat out uh, all kinds of stuff from lead to mercury to plastics. Um, there's a chain I don't have any financial tie to called Massage Green around town and they have infrared saunas you can rent for half an hour, an hour, a pretty reasonable price. Uh, many cities don't have that. And then just recently there's been a lot coming out of Finland that Steam Sauna does the same thing. It's just if you belong to a health club you might have easier access to a Steam Sauna. Some people get this for their home, uh, there's benefits, cardiovascular, inflammation, weight loss. Um, some memory data just came out of Finland that saw it uh, helps prevent Alzheimer's. Pretty interesting stuff. And it's relaxing and it feels good and it might be a place nobody can reach you. You can leave your cell phone out of the sauna. Certainly a steam sauna, don't take your cell phone. Next slide. All right. I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to exercise. I mean, I still have a real practice. I talk to patients all the time. Um, it turns out it doesn't take much exercise to benefit you. If you go with the traditional statement, the American Heart Association says 22 minutes a day. That's 150 minutes a week. That you're on the treadmill, you're on the bike, you're doing a yoga flow, you're doing a bar class, you're doing Pilates, 22 minutes a day, 150 minutes a week. But if you don't have that, it turns out some science you may or may not be aware of, called HIIT, High Intensity Interval Training. Uh, a professor in Japan, and then subsequently a professor in Hamilton, Ontario, asked the question, if you do a certain kind of workout, can you get as much benefit in seven or eight minutes as you get in 45 minutes? Because you might not have 45 minutes, but you probably have seven or eight minutes. And that science started 30 years ago, 20 years ago, and now it's pretty much well accepted. So if you go to the next slide, this was the science. If you started a relatively poor physical fitness state and six weeks later you get retested, um, endurance exercise means I'm on the elliptical 45 minutes four times a week, like everybody at every health club. And the other one was actually just eight minutes of exercise, but it's 30 seconds really hard, 15 seconds off, 30 seconds really hard. Some people can't do that, some people shouldn't, but the majority of us could. You're done in eight minutes. Some people are still tying their shoes on and you're done. That's actually very often. I'm walking out of the health club as the person that I walked in together is just going up the stairs. There's some fun little apps from the New York Times and free stuff uh, about high intensity interval training, but it does take away some of the you know roadblock of time, 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 time. You can make the time, 15 minutes is way better than zero. Um, they don't move during the day, stand during the day, uh, take a lunch break, walk for 15 minutes, are all good things for your overall health, your brain health. Walking in nature is one of the most common, relaxing, restorative things you can do. If you get a chance to walk barefoot, people know, ever heard of earthing or grounding? Surprise, so many of you, wow. It's still a little foo-foo in terms of, you know, real science and certainly not accepted by standard medicine. But there may be something about getting uh, either leather shoes, because um, electricity does conduct through leather, it doesn't conduct through uh, the rubber soles that most of us wear, or artificial soles. And better yet, just shuck off your shoes and walk in the grass or walk on the beach. Uh, again, in Michigan, that's not so easy, um, but it's something to kind of shoot for. Next slide, please. Number six, this may be the single most important tip, which is this mind-body connection that when we're stressed, uh, you know, sets off alarms, our cortisol, our adrenaline, causes our blood sugar, our blood pressure to go up, ages us, and all kinds of things. And it's no longer the Beatles and the Swami, and you know, sort of almost comical, what the heck are they doing? Uh, they were way ahead of their time. 
So I'm a fan of something, again, I'm time efficient. I have a busy schedule. And you know, 20 minutes twice a day is a standard statement for transcendental meditation. There's a funny little meme that says, if you don't have 20 minutes twice a day to meditate, you should be meditating 60 minutes twice a day because you're stressed. Uh, <laughs> but what if you can accomplish all that in 12 minutes? So there's something called the Kirtan Kriya. Challenge anybody ever hear that? Good, good. I have slides, you'll see. Oh, good, don't go yet. Come back, come back, come back. But the Kirtan Kriya, um, and you just write those uh, K I R T A N. K-R-I-Y-A, and you Google it, you'll find it, is a traditional non-religious Indian form of meditation that a neurologist in Tucson has been studying. It's 12 minutes, you sit quietly, you say one word over and over, we all have the same word, it's no secret mantra, and um, you actually move your fingers a little. There's YouTube, there's all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't ever talk to you about it except what kind of patient group does Dr. Kalsa study? He actually studies the parents of disabled children. And that's his target high stress group, study group, interestingly. And half he will tell, just keep doing what you're doing. And half he'll teach this and he takes them from Tucson to UCLA and they get brain scans and they get all kinds of measurements. And amazingly, there is sustained and serious benefit um, whether there's heart disease present or not, he's studied that. Whether there's aging accelerated, he's done blood work called telomeres. It's really quite phenomenal work. So if you go to the next slide now, and this doesn't really tie how to do it, but it's showing brain improvements, memory improvements, well-being improvements. He's a specialist in Alzheimer's, so improvements in memory in Alzheimer's patients, anti-aging benefits, uh, genetic expression as telomeres, you know, measurements of less stress, even some of the blood work on inflammation improves. Fairly remarkable stuff. And you know, it's something that costs nothing, it's free online. You can learn it in 30 minutes and do it for the rest of your life. I do it in the sauna at the health club, and I call it saunitation, because I'm <laughs> sauna, meditation, and I feel like I'm taking the garbage out, you know, mentally and physically. I have not trademarked that, but it should. Anyways, that's, that in and of itself uh, can help you. It's, there's, it's a combination of breathing and a little bit of movement. And again, maybe something just that the cell phone's off for 12 minutes might be a beautiful thing. All right, next time. All right, this is what I was, uh, you know, you, we wouldn't need to sauna so much other than the joy of it all. And if you're from Sweden or Finland, the cultural joy of it all. Other than the fact that we do live in this chemical age. Uh, just read a book by a local woman called Living in the Chemical Age. And literally, there's something like 80 to 100,000 chemicals that weren't in our world 100 years ago. Some are awesome, and some aren't so awesome. And some are in places you're not thinking, like your lipstick and your eyeliner and your toothpaste and your water bottle and um, pretty much anything you're buying at the store, at the drugstore, at the gas station. So um, there's a whole variety of this was kind of, again, like yoga and meditation, sort of foo-foo, but it's mainstream medicine now that, these, that your skin absorbs anything you put on it within about 26 seconds. You're drinking uh, stuff, you're eating stuff, and uh, you're putting stuff on your body that the companies are not necessarily looking out for your best interest. So how do you learn more? Because it is relating to risks of obesity, fertility, liver disease, type 2 diabetes, draining your energy, you know, you know that you got to do during the day, you need to be energetic, and you don't need something as innocuous as your lipstick in a plastic water bottle you regularly drink out of that's dragging your hormones down and keeping you from being the best you. So the, the best news is big companies like Walmart and Costco and some of the manufacturers Actually, Costco has told companies by next year that all these chemicals have to be out of products or they won't buy them. Same has Walmart, actually. So the industry and the big boxes get that the consumers are getting smarter. So next slide. But where can they get more information? How many people know about Environmental Working Group? Not many. Good. So EWG. It's a website like Consumer Report. It's, it, it is not funded by industry. It's funded by donation. EWG, environmentalworkinggroup.org, and they put out a variety, and actually it's an amazing website. Uh, 
what suntan lotion, what water purity in my town, what's the air purity in my town, but a lot of it's practical stuff. So they've gotten quite well known in the last dozen years for putting out something called the Dirty Dozen, the Clean 15. Doc, my budget doesn't allow me to buy everything organic, and very often you can go to Whole Foods and they don't have organic raspberries that day. Which ones are the most pesticide ridden by independent testing? They just came out with, this is the dirty dozen list and things like apples, disappointingly, have some of the highest levels of pesticides and Roundup on them. Um, and, all, and other things you buy, like avocados aren't on this list. They would be on the clean 15. So if you had to be selective for the budget, you might as much as you can. Strawberries, unfortunately, but you might be able to get a big, big bag of frozen organic strawberries at uh, Sam's Club or Costco, and you know, and that's fine. I don't know if you're aware of that, but the nutritional value of frozen fruits and vegetables is, you know, 98% of what it is fresh because they actually a lot of these places just they harvest them and they freeze them right in the field. So it captures most of the nutrition, and the broccoli you're buying from California is sat in the truck for three weeks by the time you eat it. So the frozen broccoli is almost, almost the same. And then there's this word salad of chemicals that are in our products. They're in our deodorants, they're in our, I won't say brand name, but the air fresheners that smell like you know, citrus orange, but they're actually something called phthalates, and they're affecting your thyroid, they're affecting your period, and they're affecting your adrenaline. And, your energy, and it's well worth reading a little bit about endocrine disrupting chemicals. Mainstream medicine, I just uh, sent off, I didn't know you could do this, but I sent off a urine sample. I don't have the results yet to see how much glyphosate, which is the chemical that's in Roundup that Monsanto makes, and even though I try and eat organic, my restaurant tries to buy organic, we all got it, I'll be curious to see what it comes back. But you, know, you don't have to do it perfect, but you should be aware and know the substitutes. Because they're not that hard. Birch bees, I don't have any stock. You know, they're large, they'll say them. No phthalates, no parabens, no um, SLS in your shampoo. Because this stuff is in your body, it's in your kid's body, it's in your significant other's body and such. Uh, and it's a simple upgrade that will be routine in the future. But Next slide. Thank you. Sleep, 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 sleep. If, you know, I got asked yesterday on an interview what a three tips you give to people, and I already said, you know, giant smoothie, dairy, but well, number three was sleep. Because when you sleep poorly, you reach for the donut. When you sleep poorly, you don't even do the 12 minute high intensity interval training or the 12 minute Kirtan Kriya yoga form for stress. Uh, when you sleep poorly, it affects your memory, and it's not just about making bad judgment, it, uh, it does change your hormones. And if you can, I mean, it's. Ariana Huffington, the her, uh, founder of the Huffington Post, but she's moved on now, um, has kind of taught the world in the last few years the importance of sleep. She said, it's the status symbol now. Who cares what car you drive? If you're talking with your girlfriend, if you're sleeping seven and a half hours a night soundly, you've got something most people don't have. They may not say Bentley on it, and may say pillow, but your chance of having a better life, a more complete life, and being a better person during the day goes up. So. How do you do that? Well, you can't sleep seven and a half hours a night going to bed at midnight and waking up at 5 a.m. because that's your routine. You've got to try and plan it. That's not easy. It's, and anytime we change anything, it's hard. I used to be four and a half. I used to be 4.30 in the morning, alarm, go to the gym for 20 years. I don't do that anymore. I do these short exercises and grab and start 60 to 90 minutes of sleep. It feels wonderful. Dark room, cold room, white noise, earplugs, face mask, whatever you need. Melatonin at night, Epsom salt bath at night, magnesium at night, um, CBD oil at night, um, something called GABA. If you suffer stress and anxiety, health food stores sell a little capsule uh, called GABA that for stress and anxiety can be wonderful. Uh, before bed can help, or one in the morning you're awake and your mind's racing. GABA is amazing for that. Uh, get you guys <coughs> Don't use alcohol. It actually may, you may get you know, drunk and fall asleep, but it does seriously interrupt REM sleep, and it doesn't add to your overall you know, health um, in a social setting, perhaps, but not as a sleep aid. Next slide. A few supplements. Um, I'm universally trained in vitamins. I don't think all vitamins are expensive urine. I don't think you need to take 40 or 50. I just mentioned an Epsom salt bath, that's magnesium. I just mentioned things get in through your skin. Well, 
you get in the bathtub with Epsom salt, you get magnesium through your skin. Magnesium helps so many things. Migraines, palpitation skips, difficult periods, um, constipation, stress and anxiety, and Epsom salt bath magnesium before bed, high blood pressure can help. But if you don't have time for that, there's an inexpensive bottle called Natural Calm. You can buy it almost every health food store and even drug store. You take a couple of teaspoons before bed. Maybe you start with one, make sure your GI tract tolerates it, and then move to two. Sleep better and have some of these other benefits. Um, I, almost every patient in my practice is on magnesium. Why, if you go to the next slide? Because we should be eating magnesium, but there's some fascinating data. If you look at an apple in 1914 and an apple about eight years later, this one says here it had 29 milligrams of magnesium in the apple down to five. Soil deterioration, I won't go into that topic. But an apple tree is in soil, it gets the magnesium, and if there's the same crop, nobody rotates anymore, nobody puts all natural fertilizers, it's just not as healthy. There is also a difference, there is more nutrition on average in organic versus conventional. On average, organic farmers might do more to rotate crops and turn over. Um, so the bottom line is we can use a few supplements like magnesium. Um, Vitamin D. Vitamin D is still unresolved, but will live longer. Ask your doctor just to check your vitamin D level or take 2,000 international units a day. You're not going to harm yourself if you do that. Next slide. And number 10 has come on like a steamroller as a tool to health, a tool to weight management, a tool to avoiding some of these what are called chronic diseases of age, diabetes type 2, high blood pressure, arthritis memory loss, which is we overeat. We overeat in this country. Forget it, what's got protein, carbs, and what's got uh, fats in it. If you're sticking to a lot of garden foods, you don't have to count on that stuff. But we eat too much, we eat too many meals, we've got trainers telling people to eat six times a day, which for very few people is a good plan, and for most of us is a excuse to eat snacks all day long. Um, you know, two meals a day works for most of us, three, uh, for a few. So there's all different kinds of fasting programs. The, uh, our bodies are built to deal with periods of no food and heal, repair, and restore damaged parts of our body. We do better by going without now and then. Um, the easiest thing to do is 12 hours a day, don't eat. 8 p.m., 8 a.m., kitchen clothes, pantries clothes. You think how many calories we eat after 8 p.m. on average or you know, families in general. Um, it's, it's deleterious to our weight, our health, our blood sugar, our ability to perform at our peak performance. 12 hours. Some people pick a day a week and will just do water or juice. Um, if you know, and you do know Bragg's apple cider vinegar, the Bragg family has a book on fasting. It's something I only came across in the last six months. It's a wonderful book at health food stores. The hottest, hottest thing though is what this is. Um, that you can spend five days in a row eating less than average, and then go back to a healthy diet for the rest of the month. So you don't have to do anything special most of the month, and get unbelievable physical benefits that were never known before. This is the genius of a professor in LA named Dr. Longo, uh, nominated for the Nobel Prize in Medicine. <coughs> Just got a $10 million National Institutes of Health grant a couple weeks ago for the fourth time or the fifth time. Next slide. Um, so he has these boxes. You can go look at this website. It's plant-based, that's why I kind of got excited about it. There's no beef jerky in there, no bacon in there, and it's literally the food you eat for five days. I've had, I've used this on hundreds of patients. I've done it many times myself. I've lost more than 20 pounds doing this very effortlessly. But it's uh, five days of food in a box. It's not Marie Osmond Nutrisystem chemicals. It's very clean, nuts, olives, uh, teas, and soups. And then you go back to your hopefully healthy diet for the rest of the month. Uh, with the end point, you might feel mentally clearer, better. It's a play, if you've heard the word ketosis, ketotic diet. It puts you into ketosis for a day or two using plants, actually. You don't have to use beef and bacon to do that. Uh, and then you go back to a healthy diet. Dr. Longer does not think being ketotic long periods of time is healthy, short periods of time. I mean, there were times in our past we couldn't find a mastodon to eat, and we were hungry, and this reproduces it. It is actually 800 calories a day, so. It's not completed without food. Next slide. But when you look at what happens, fat around, well, body weight goes down, fat around the belly goes down, inflammation goes down, and this is the most 
you need to find you've got stem cells come out of your bone marrow and heal injured parts of your body. So people talk about their knees, their heads, their shoulders feeling better, and actually using food to trigger self-healing. Cool, cool stuff you may not know about. You can read more, just take a look. Next slide. So wrapping it up, I mean, simple, simple concepts. Whole foods. There are junky, junky food vegetarians, junky, junky food vegans. They're not going to do well long term. They're probably not going to you know, be at their best for their families. In fact, some data from Harvard says it's actually you know, fake bacon, fake bologna, fake everything. It's great for the animals. It's great for the environment. It's actually maybe worse uh, than some uh, other diets that involve animal foods. Healthy fats. Talking about avocados, nuts, and olives, whole ones, predominantly maybe super duper extra virgin olive oil. It, whether you want to eat only plants or just lots of them, a lot of them. And then nutrient dense is the idea that you can, uh, a pound of olive oil is 4,000 calories, a pound of kale is 100 calories. How much fiber is in a pound of olive oil? Zippo, or a piece of lamb, or a piece of, how much fiber is in a pound of kale? All you knew, need to power your GI tract for a long time, vitamin C and all. Thinking about how much nutrition, and fiber being a real good test, because fiber is only in plants when you look at the back of the box. So I think I'm about to the end. One more, oh, resources. If you've never watched a documentary called Forks Over Knives, sit your family down, watch it. It's good, clean education. Last year, a movie came out, What the Hell, Go Back. Uh, very entertaining, educating uh, book. Uh, a book called The China Study. Um, she has changed many people's lives understanding this food is information, food is education. Uh, we have a local food group called Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group.org. You can look at the website. The author of The China Study is speaking at the end of the month at Groves High School. Um, Phenomenal group that I started with a patient to help 20 people um, eat better and have a social support to do that. Now there's 5,200 members. That's a lot more than 20. We had no idea in four years it was going to catch on. Uh, I got all kinds of stuff on my site. And then the last slide, uh, giving a shout out. I thought I had a picture of my wife on Sunday. But anyways, we're crazy. We're really embedded in this health and wellness. And uh, eat yourself and move yourself and sleep yourself to... Uh, better levels of uh, self-care, self-love. Your doctor's important in your life. I actually think your farmer and your produce manager is more important in your health very often than a doctor. Uh, your trainer might be, uh, your masseuse might be. These are people that you know um, can get at the root cause of what we talk about in functional medicine, the stress and toxicity and poor nutrition and uh, you know, exposure to things like smoking and stuff. So, I appreciate the invite. I hope at least one of those, like the Kurt Time Kriya or the seven or 12 minute high intensity interval training or thinking about food as information and medicine uh, relate to something you can do different starting today or tomorrow. I talked after lunch, but I talked before lunch. You all would have just munched on the guacamole and the bean salad. Uh, but anyways, I'd be happy uh, to take a question or two. I'll be out for a little bit while Max, I don't know when the next break is, I have a brand new book called Plant-Based Solution Full of Recipes and a previous book on holistic heart health called Your Whole Heart Solution. They're on Amazon. I brought a few. I feel no obligation and look forward to seeing you from time. But thank you, Julie, very much. something for you. Oh, wow. Wasn't that wonderful? Oh, thank you. I took like three pages of notes. <laughs> it was thank amazing. You. Okay. Um, One of our sponsors, oh. it's kind of heavy. This is from Capability Products. Yeah. They've given us some items that are going to be in the raffle and selling auction. Oh. I want to show you this. This is pretty cool. They're in hospitals. They're yeah. doing some studies. This is kind of heavy. Yeah. When we were putting this together, I have a little mini one. I would put it on my neck and it just takes the tension right out. So I know you like to stand up a lot when yeah, you're having doctor's right. things. This will be something you can put it around you or whatever. Better. I feel yeah. like Moses. Yeah, you do. <laughs> it's gonna picture yeah. me and Moses. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Wow. Yeah, I do. So yeah, I want to read so about much. it. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.